Hi, and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to talk about Sheila Jeet, how to use it, and what are the benefits. So we'll also talk about the different types of Sheila Jeet, as well as how it can support our gut health and even women's health. And also, should you be combining Sheila Jeet with different or other adaptogens? And then, of course, how can you best use it in your day-to-day -day practice? But first, before we dig into our topic, my name is Marcy Vasky. I'm a licensed nutritionist with Fluso Nutrients. And at Fluso Nutrients, we work really hard to help educate you on different types of supplements that you can use to help support your overall well being. And of course, I do want to say that if you have questions about certain supplements or wonder if there might be contraindications with any medications or other supplements you are taking, it is going to be best to speak with a supplement literate practitioner who can help guide you in the right direction. So without further ado, let's dig back into our topic, which is Shilajit and how to use it and what are its benefits. So first of all, to answer the question of what is Shilajit, it is a sticky tar-like substance that's actually found in crevices and rocks in the Himalayan mountains. It is actually formed over centuries by decomposition of plants, certain minerals, and of course different organic matter. And what makes Shilajit really unique is that it is filled with fulvic and humic acid as well as almost 85 different minerals. Shilajit actually has many benefits, so let's walk through a few of them. Number one is improved energy and stamina. Shilajit actually helps to improve our mitochondrial function. Another one is enhanced cognitive function. Because of the high amount of fulvic acid in Shilajit, it helps to improve our cognitive function with improving memory, our focus, and um, also mental clarity. Shilajit is also known for its reduction in inflammation. It helps to reduce um, inflammation in joints and also can help support arthritis. It also helps to support our immune function. So because of the high amount of antioxidants and of course all those minerals in Shilajit, it helps to keep our immune function very strong. Shilajit has also been found to help support diabetes management and helping to support those blood sugar levels which can help keep um, them more steady throughout the day and of course long term keeping our insulin levels more low and our body more receptive to sugar. In addition, it does also support cardiovascular health. Due to all the minerals and antioxidants that are found in Shilajit, it does make a really nice supplement for cardiovascular health and heart health. All right, so you might think, wow, that has a lot of benefits and can, you know, maybe that's something you want to try. But which is best? Do you do it in capsules? Do you take it by gummy form, powdered form? And, you know, Shilajit in general, because it's a tar-like substance that's grown between rocks and crevices, seems like it wouldn't be too tasty in powder form. But there are different forms of Shilajit, and one of them is just capsules. Obviously, in capsule form, it's going to be a pre-measured amount, and so easy to take and easy for on the go. Now, another option is taking it in gummy form, and of course, I don't usually advise gummy supplements um, because a lot of times they put more sugar in it than we really need, and who needs more sugar in their life? So if you have a hard time taking capsules and you don't like the taste of Shilajit, which is pretty strong, you can look for gummy formed um, supplements and just look for more of that low sugar added amount or maybe even just stevia or um, as a uh, sweetener. And as I said, Shilajit does come in powdered form, which does give you a little bit more flexibility in how much you take day to day. And um, you know, some, because the capsules are all predetermined amounts and so are gummies, taking that powder, you can t kind of increase it slowly and kind of land on a certain amount that's really specific to you. However, Shilajit does have a pretty strong flavor, so some people don't really like it, but that doesn't mean you can't try it. 
And lastly, you can find shilajit also in a tincture, which would be just little drops. So sometimes people prefer to do um, drops over of any of the other three. Um, drops are usually a little bit more bioavailable, meaning that they're going to absorb much more quickly and you might get a faster response. So if you think that, okay, well, this sounds good. I think I'll try it in a certain form. Now I know which ones to do, but how much should I take and when and why and all the things. So number one is how much. And usually the dose is between 200 and 500 milligrams a day. It's best to kind of increase slowly to make sure that your body responds, responds well with it and you don't have any side effects. When you do find, let's say you're gonna start with that 200 milligram dose in the morning, um, you can take it in the morning in the, any time of day, but the one thing to do is on an empty stomach, so sometimes just in the morning it's easier. Also, one thing with Shilajit, and like with most supplements, being consistent was, it will give you the best benefit. And we can't just do it a few times a week and hope for the best. And that's like with, like as I said, with most supplements. And also, can you combine with other supplements? Yes. Another adaptogen that really goes well with Shilajit is ashwagandha. And sometimes you can find that in combo form or you can take them separately. But I always advise that if you are taking like a, you know, you're kind of taking them together, I would just find one that's combined and go that route. So as I said and talked about already, Shilajit does have many benefits. And a couple that I'm gonna point out is number one, it does help support our gut health. I do work in gut health day to day, so I do see a lot of people struggling with issues. And what we found with Shilajit or what studies have found is that it does help to improve our gut microbiome because of the fulvic and humic acid that is in Shilajit as well as the minerals and antioxidants that are, that are found in Shilajit, it can help support inflammation of our intestinal tract and help to just support a better environment overall. So if you're someone who's struggling with, you know, a kind of an inflamed gut, maybe some bloating, some gas, just some really digestive upset, and you've tried a lot of things, Shilajit might be something you wanna put in your um, toolkit for something to help support your digestive health. Now, not only does Shilajit help with gut health and all the other benefits I talked about, but it's very commonly used Ayurvedically for women's health and primarily for women's hormones, helping to sustain regular menstrual cycles and reducing PMS. Also, it does help support bone health because of the large amount of minerals that are found in Shilajit, magnesiums and calciums, then that helps to support better bone growth for, our, for you in general. Also, it helps stress management. Shilajit can help to reduce the stress in the body, um, and that's why sometimes paired along with ashwagandha, it works really nice to bring down that stress reaction within ourselves. So we've walked through many th positives about Shilajit, the benefits, how to use it, what it is, all the things, but what do you need to watch out for? If it is something that you're thinking, well, I might give it a try, but are there side effects? And there are some to be aware of, and usually they're very mild. One can be digestive upset. So maybe, and, and this is why we wanna add in the Shilajit um, slowly to see how your body responds. But some people do struggle with some nausea, maybe a little extra gas and bloating, but never something that lasts long term, but of course, be aware. Also, there's allergic reactions, so being aware of you know anything that would seems off to you, stop immediately and seek help if you are having an allergic reaction. Also, it does, you know, are there interactions with medication? And yes, you don't want to be taking Shilajit if you are on an, on an antidepressant, if you're taking any blood thinners, as well as any, any diabetic medications. You just need to be very careful with that. And, and honestly, I would just say don't do it. So I think those are some important pieces to remember. If all the benefits sound really great to you, but you've got some questions with maybe medications that you're taking or um, you know, worried about any allergic reaction, 
it's just something to be mindful, of course, of. And so I hope that this help provides some more information just about different types of supplements that can help support you. I will link um, Sheila G down below if it's something you're thinking like, well, I would like to try it. You know, what's the best one to try? I'll, I will um, link that down below where you can easily find that. And of course, I'm asking any questions that you have, please, you know, leave those in our in our chat down below as well and I hope this I hope this helped um, kind of expand your supplemental uh, education and help you make a better choice for yourself thanks for watching